This is a video about SUVs, sport utility vehicles, a buying guide from CatoCarGuide.com. And I'm Jeremy Cato. Thanks for watching. Now, what I won't be doing here is this. Ah! Ah! <laughs> this. Ah! <laughs> Bullets. Or this. If I only had the budget. You won't find any trips down memory lane either. But if you do like what you see here in this buying guide, please subscribe and maybe one day I will be able to afford all these crazy adventures. What I'm about here is a little more basic, but it might be a lot more valuable if you're in the market for a three-row SUV in about the $60,000 range. This video will give you a lightning-fast rundown of eight of the top-selling three-rowers in this price range. You'll get an overview of each one, a rundown of the highlights and lowlights one by one, my thoughts on how each one stacks up against the others, and reasons for buying or not. I'll be quick, straightforward, and I hope you find this insightful and useful. So let's go. Let's start with the 2025 Honda Pilot Trail Sport, a rig I just finished test driving. If you're a family looking for a reliable, spacious, and versatile three-row SUV, this should be on your list. Here's why the Pilot Trail Sport stands out. Highlights? Well, it has roomy first and second row seating. That's perfect seating for those long family road trips. There's also lots of cargo space and interior storage spots. You'll never run out of room for your gear. And the controls, they're easy to use. You do not need a doctorate in ergonomics to operate the infotainment system. On the downside, the standard touchscreen interface is simply too small. You might need to squint. Third row seating is cramped for adults and is best reserved for kids or very, very flexible friends. The acceleration is lackluster and so is the braking performance. Don't expect to win any drag races. The Pilot offers three rows, reasonable power, and various trim levels. It is a versatile contender in this crowded segment. The Trail Sport trim, in particular, is geared towards light off-road adventures with its higher ground clearance and rugged features. Why should you buy the Pilot Trail Sport? It's versatile. It can be a family vehicle in the city, or you can take it for long off-road adventures to the cabin, to the ski hill, wherever. The cabin, well, the interior is incredibly practical with ample storage and seating configurations and it's capable in the Outback. The Trail Sport trim is one of the most capable three-road crossovers for light off-road duty, at least at this price point. So to sum up, the Pilot Trail Sport is a pretty darn good choice for families. It's versatile and it's practical. As for the driving experience, the V6 engine sounds great, but offers only average acceleration. The transmission can be overly busy. The braking is smooth, but the pedal feel, well, it's not firm. It's not, it's not comforting. In summary, the 2025 Honda Pilot Trail Sport is a well-rounded SUV that excels in practicality and versatility. But don't expect it to be the fastest or most luxurious option out there. But hey, who needs speed when you've got room for all the kids and their soccer gear and your camping gear? We'll turn now to the 2024 Buick Enclave. But before I say anything about the 2024, I need to tell you that for the 2025 model year, Buick plans to launch a significantly upgraded version of the Enclave. For now, the 2024 Buick Enclave is spacious and comfortable. It offers a smooth ride and plenty of features. Here's why the current Enclave stands out and why you might want to consider buying it. On the upside, generous cargo and passenger room. 
This is perfect for family road trips and hauling all your gear. There's a quiet and smooth ride. You'll enjoy a peaceful drive, even on rough roads. You'll find plenty of standard features. You get a lot of bang for your buck. And there's lots of device charging solutions, which in this day and age, this is important. Keep all your gadgets powered up on the go. On the downside, well, this one is pricier than a lot of non-luxury rivals. You might feel the pinch in your wallet. Interior quality doesn't look or feel premium, despite the higher price tag. And the Enclave lacks many modern technologies. Some competitors offer more advanced tech. The Enclave is a large, stylish, and upscale SUV. It's in fact one of the most spacious in this segment. So it's great for carrying people and cargo. The tried and true V6 engine, well, it delivers strong power and competitive fuel economy. While it's not the most high-tech SUV, it provides the essential infotainment and driver assist features you need. As for the driving experience, that old 3.6 liter V6, it offers decent power. The brakes are smooth, but require a longer stopping distance. Why should you buy the 2024 Enclave? The roomy interior, the Enclave offers generous passenger room, especially in the front and second rows. The third row is more spacious than some rivals, though not best in class. Then there's the smooth and quiet ride. The Enclave excels in providing a comfortable and quiet driving experience. It's also a practical rig with plenty of cargo space and storage solutions. So the 2024 Enclave is a decent choice for families looking to buy a rig that feels a bit upscale, is spacious, and offers a comfortable ride with plenty of features. It may not be the most luxurious or high-tech option, but it excels in practicality and comfort. So it's a great family road tripper. Just be prepared to pay a bit more for a rig that looks upscale, but lacks some of the most high-tech features. And keep in mind too that a 2025 version is coming, and that will change the equation entirely. The Kia Telluride is a standout in this segment of three-row SUVs. It offers a terrific blend of comfort, technology, and practicality, and that puts it right at the top of its class here. Here's why you should consider this SUV. On the upside, comfort. The ride is plush, and well-shaped seats provide plenty of all-day comfort. There's space. The interior is huge, which is perfect for large families. On the tech and safety front, well, there's lots of standard tech and safety features for this price point. And this rig is user friendly. Driver assist features are effective and easy to use. On the downside, well, storage. There is less small item storage in the cabin compared to some competitors. And acceleration, well, it's slightly jerky under full acceleration. Since its debut in 2020, the Telluride has been a favorite among three-row SUV shoppers. The 2024 model continues to impress with minor styling updates, and it retains the significant refresh from last year, which includes rugged new trim levels and enhanced driver assist features. Let's talk about performance. You'll get from zero to 100 kilometers in around eight seconds, which is similar to the Honda Pilot and the Hyundai Palisade. The brakes? They're strong and reliable. They bring the Telluride to a stop very quickly with no muss and no fuss. As for handling, the steering is light at low speeds, the rig is stable around corners, and there is minimal body roll. Why should you think about buying the Telluride? Let's start with comfort and space. The Telluride offers a quiet upscale cabin with adult-friendly third row seating. It's an ideal rig for long trips and large families. There's also a lot of value here. The extensive standard features and advanced safety tech, well, that gets you a lot for your money. The Telluride is a reliable, well-rounded, and value-packed three-row SUV. This rig stands out in a crowded market. Its combination of comfort, space, and tech features makes it a top pick for families looking for a three-row SUV. Plus, it's got that cool parent vibe without trying too hard. The Hyundai Palisade is a Kia Telluride 
in Hyundai clothing. They share the same mechanical bits and pieces under the skin, and even the skins aren't all that different. But that means the Palisade is a great combination of value, comfort, and capability. Here's why you should consider this SUV. On the plus side, the spacious interior. There is plenty of room here for adults in all three rows. And the high-tech features. This rig comes with a plethora of standard and optional tech features. The comfortable ride. The ride quality is well above average. On the downside, well, handling is not as sharp as some competitors, and fuel economy is mediocre. Like its Kia cousin, the Telluride, the Palisade made its debut in 2020. And since then, it's really built a reputation for delivering to families space, comfort, and technology. As for performance, the acceleration here is average for the class. The braking is strong and predictable. And the handling, while not the sharpest, is competent. When we are talking about comfort, well, I like the noise levels. They're minimal, and there's very little road noise, even at highway speeds. Why should you consider buying a Palisade? There's lots of value for money here. This rig is packed with features at a competitive price. It's comfortable. That is, it's ideal for long drives with family or friends. And I like the luxury touches, especially in the calligraphy trim. This offers a premium feel without a premium price. In short, the Palisade is a well-rounded SUV that ticks most of the boxes for family buyers, especially at this price. It's spacious, comfortable, and loaded with technology. It's a strong contender in the three-row SUV market. If you can overlook its average handling and so-so fuel economy, the Palisade offers excellent value with a touch of luxury. Next, we come to the Toyota Grand Highlander, which, as you might guess, is a bigger version of the long-running Toyota Highlander. And this is for families who need more space and more comfort. Here's why you might want to consider this Toyota SUV. Let's start with passenger and cargo space. This rig is spacious, and it has one of the most adult-friendly third rows in its class. The comfortable ride, I like it. This rig is smooth over bumps and ruts, and this makes long drives more pleasant. You'll also get lots of standard features and outward visibility. Well, it's easy to see out of this rig, and this is good for safety and for driving confidence. I also want to point out that Toyota offers electrified versions of the Grand Highlander. And if you're interested in fuel economy, look here. The Grand Highlander, of course, offers a lot more space than the regular Highlander. Cargo space is among the best in its class. So why should you consider the Toyota Grand Highlander? Well, it's spacious, it's comfortable, it's well-equipped, and you have hybrid options, excellent hybrid options, very important for fuel economy. Also, the Highlander is one of the best-built SUVs you can buy at any price. Volkswagen's Atlas is a solid contender in the mid-sized three-row SUV market, but it's certainly not best in class. Here's why the Atlas deserves at least a test drive. The interior, it's big. All three rows provide ample room for adults, and this, of course, makes those long trips comfortable. There's also lots of cargo space. It's nearly class-leading. And the ride is smooth. The Atlas handles bumps and rough roads with ease. On the downside, the touch-sensitive controls. They can be even tricky to use while you're driving. And power delivery. The turbocharged four-cylinder engine can be jumpy at low speeds. Why should you buy the Atlas? Well, it's a pretty good value, but if you prioritize smooth power delivery and intuitive controls, you might want to look elsewhere. I have to confess that the Mazda CX-90 is one of my very favorites in this class. I love the sporty handling and the quick acceleration and the styling, very cool. It does have some drawbacks in terms of third row space and cargo capacity, but it's a top contender in this class. On the upside, quick acceleration and sporty handling. The CX-90 is quicker and more agile than most competitors. 
The ride is also comfortable. It's smooth and enjoyable for both short trips and long drives. This rig also has a refined luxury leaning interior. It does not feel like an entry level SUV at all. It feels like something much more expensive. And the fuel economy is pretty good. On the downside, cargo capacity is below average. It's not the best for hauling lots of gear. And the small third row seat, it's a squeeze for adults. The CX-90 is similar in size to the old CX-9, but it has a longer wheelbase, which means there's more space for people and cargo inside. The design and the materials inside are a step up from most of the other offerings in this class, so there's a luxury feel about this rig that you just don't get in most of the other competitors. Why should you consider buying the Mazda CX-90? The driving experience. It feels sporty and it's responsive. This is a rig that also looks and feels more expensive than it actually is, and it's just plain comfortable. Ford's Explorer as a model in the marketplace has been around almost forever. It's one of the original SUVs. Unfortunately, Ford has killed the hybrid version of the Explorer, and I don't understand that reasoning at all. And not all Explorers are available with three rows. If you want three rows, you'll pay a little bit more. But overall, it's a solid choice that looks pretty good. But there are some drawbacks in terms of interior space and build quality. The two engines available the four-cylinder 2.3-liter and the turbocharged 3-liter V6, they're both good engines that deliver quick acceleration. The handling is secure. This, this rig feels stable and agile, so it's pretty fun to drive. And Ford offers a lot of driver assist features. It's, it's co-pilot features. The cargo area is pretty roomy. The second and third row space it's limited. This is not as spacious as some of the competitors. And the interior materials, I would say, are somewhat subpar. The, the quality could be better. The, for shoppers, be aware that Ford offers a variety of Explorer trims, and the third row is only available if you spend a bit more money. For you drivers out there, you're going to like the handling. There's excellent grip, and the overall balance of it makes it an enjoyable rig to drive. Why should you consider the Explorer? Performance, versatility, and technology. You have two choices of engines. You have a good 10-speed automatic transmission. It's versatile. If you really want to be an off-roader, you can upgrade the Explorer to something that really will tackle the, the mud bogs and the rocks and all the rest of it. And the technology that's available is first-rate, especially the co-pilot system. The Explorer is capable. It looks good. But the third row is certainly not as roomy as other rigs in this class. And the build quality, not as good as many of the rivals in this class. There you have it, eight three-row midsize SUVs in the $60,000 range. My favorite in the group, the Mazda CX-90. But you may feel differently, so go test them all. Thanks for watching. I'm Jeremy Cato, and this is CatoCarGuy.com. We'll see you next time.